morning. My name is Dana Van Noppen. I'm so excited about our fireside chat today. We're going to have a really good time talking about things that are alive and things that are not alive. So first, I'm excited to be here with you today, and I know that we're going to have a really fun time talking about the big God story. But first, I wonder what all these objects are. What do you think these things are here on the screen? Why do you think that they're here? We're going to sort them. We're going to decide which things are alive and which things are not alive. What about this plant? Is this plant alive or not alive? You're right. This plant is alive. How about this rock? Is this rock alive or not alive? That one's easy. This rock is not alive. How about a hairbrush? Do you use a hairbrush every day? If a hairbrush was alive, would you still run it through your hair? I wouldn't. A hairbrush is not alive. How about a dog? Do you have a dog in your house? A dog is alive. Hopefully your dog is alive right now. <laughs> what about a flower? A flower is a living thing. How about a sprig of basil? We put that in our food. A sprig of basil is alive. We can talk about lots of different things that are alive and not alive. You can probably look around your house and decide which objects are living and which objects are not living. And so today, I want to see how that applies to our big God story. Our remember verse for today is Philippians 3.10. It says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. On the night that Jesus was born, God sent angels to announce his birth to the shepherds in a field nearby. The shepherds were so excited that they went to see the baby. Then they went and told everyone what they'd seen and heard. The promised Savior was born in Bethlehem. Jesus grew up in a way that was pleasing to God. He never made a bad choice or did anything wrong. Jesus taught people the very best way to live. He cared for those who were hungry. He healed people who were hurt or sick. And he even brought people who had died back to life. Jesus is God. And that's amazing. God became a man so that he could be the savior and bring us back to himself. Jesus is the savior that God promised to send. And we're forgiven of sins because of his sacrifice. What did Jesus do? That's right. Jesus came to earth and gave his life on the cross. He paid the punishment for our sins. When we choose to believe that Jesus is God's only son and he died for our sins, and we accept his love in our hearts, we get to be with God forever. But Jesus didn't stay dead, did he? No, after he died, Jesus' friends took his body, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed him in a tomb. Then they closed the tomb by rolling a very large stone in front of it. And when they came back on the third day, Jesus wasn't there. The tomb was empty. An angel told Jesus' friends that he had risen, just like he said. He came back to life, just like he promised. Jesus is alive. God the Father brought his son Jesus back to life. And now Jesus is alive. The big God story doesn't end there. Do you know why? You're right. God loves us, and he wants us to know him and be a part of his great love. We can be part of God's big story too, because Jesus is alive. I wanna pray and bless you. May you know that you are part of God's big story because Jesus is alive. In the name of Jesus. I hope to see you again next week. I'm really excited about it.